a developer out of Japan, uh, Studio Saizenzen. And they're known for a game called uh, Code of Princess, and they've been making games for over 20 years. And Damn. The, we wow. got in contact with them. We started talking to them, uh, built a relationship, and they said, hey, we're making a fighting game. Right. We, we want to work with you. And we said, yeah, we'd love to. And right now what you're seeing is uh, Blade Strangers. Blade Strangers. So it's a fighting game that takes uh, some of the ideas of a Smash where you have different characters, Smash Brothers, where you have different characters who will be fighting against each other. The dynamics and speed of a game like Street Fighter 2 and Guilty Gear. But wow. The, but the easy inputs of Smash Brothers, where right. with Street Fighter, somebody's trying to do a Zangief. It's, like it's, it's yeah, very it, intricate. Yeah, it really can And the be. barrier of entries, it, it changes. It if does I, If fluctuate. I've been playing for two months and you've been playing for a day, I'm going to just... Annihilate. Annihilate. Me. Right. But if you know the inputs, just like Smash, and it, Smash is a deep game, but if you know the inputs, it changes the dynamic of how you're playing. So with, with Blade Strangers, they took that same idea and the same approach, where they took a traditional fighting game and they said, why don't we make it so that the moves are a little bit different and but easier to do and more direct, and you still have combos and you still have the foot play and all these, these super moves. Um, and Saizenzen has been developing this for over a year and a half. It's uh, 3D backgrounds it, with what looks like, we'll go ahead and go into versus mode now, and um, it's 3D backgrounds with uh, 2D what looks like 2D characters, and it's got characters from Coda Princess, from other games, including, uh, which Whoa. we'll see later, you got Curly Brace right there from Cave Story. Yeah. So it's, uh, if, you know, you're going to see That's pretty rad, man. Little, yeah, it's getting pretty rad. <laughs> That's awesome. So we'll go ahead and pick any characters. We'll show you Curly later right here. And you have Princess Solange right there, who is uh, the main character out of uh, Coda Princess. And this character is uh, really interesting because uh, Princess Solange was created and designed by Kino Nishimura. And she is one of the old school Capcom Street Fighter II artists. Oh, man. That's so, really cool. Yeah, so it's pretty rad. So right here you see these two characters right here. And although it looks 2D, the original characters are actually made with 3D models and they have a, a pretty great proprietary process to turn the characters into 2D sprites. What? And then they hand touch everything. So then you so get. So this is actually a 3D model. So the, it was a 3D model, and, and then then, ma then made it into 2D. They made it into 2D, the, but then the background is the, 3D. What is the benefit of doing that? Did it make it better? It makes it better in the sense that when you're doing pixel art or when you're doing 2D art, every time you're drawing every frame, you have to draw every frame. So, but with a 3D character, you model it once, you rig it, and then you animate it, and okay. then you have that character data again, and then you can reanimate it, so you don't have to keep making so the character faster. over again. Because this a, it's is a, a very faster. hard process to make it like this, right? The, this the old very, way, the old way. The old way, but even this is, is a bit of a, a... It's a big challenge. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big challenge, but you can see right here, even though the game's not done yet, it's a pretty far along in terms of, of the look and the feel of it, and allows you to zoom in and, and really work in a 3D space. And uh, they've been working with, with us on Everything this. Everything that I wish the Saturn would have done right. Yeah, this is, this is like a super Saturn yeah, right here, and you're going to see like... it on Switch and PS4, also on PC and uh, in Japan arcades as well. It's Gorgeous, man. Thank you. Yeah, I'll let them know you like it. We saw on the menu screen you had a bunch of different modes as well. Are you going to be expanding this into a, a story where these characters that's have gotten together? That's right. Absolutely. There's a, there's a story mode where when you play the story mode, similar to uh, Street Fighter 4 when you're playing, you'll you'll see cutscenes and you'll have discussions with the character what's going on and they're kind of clashing and you know the different characters want to know what the motivation is or why they're fighting. So uh, I'll keep the story a little bit. You know, secret for now, but it's 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 a typical fighting game. So most of the appeal is going to be playing story mode, but playing with your friends together, um, and also having this will have online. So you'll yeah. be able to play online, and that's another uh, another great bonus to having um, non sort sort of non multi input. Right. Is it reduces the the chance for missed input for lag. Oh, that's very nice. This is amazing, everything that you're telling me. Thank you. Because I know how hard it's been and, and how hard it is to create an indie studio. And you're talking to me about online multiplayer and fighting and stuff. That's amazing, I love dude. it. This is my dream. This, this, is, yeah, this the, is a big yeah, deal. This is all, and right here, the soundtrack. So it's really cool because it's a total collaboration. We have a Japanese development team doing the game. And the soundtrack is by Matthias Bossi and uh, John Evans, who did the soundtrack to The Binding of Isaac. OK. So it's got a really great, fantastic, like hard rocking, like speed metal soundtrack. It's really, really cool stuff that they've put together for all the different characters. And they've been working uh, through translation, but working directly with the studio, saying like, okay, I'd like the sound like this, or I'd like this song like this. Um, so it's a lot of fun. And right now, they're, uh, the Japanese studio, actually, even over the weekend, they're, they're doing all the VO Of in course Japan. they are. Yeah. Of they course don't they stop. are. They, they don't, don't stop. stop, man. They don't stop. No way. Yeah. This, game, <laughs> this game should be done next week then, yeah. right? And that's they why you don't... see the Japanese right now. So that's, uh, right. that'll obviously be uh, English once, once it gets to the US right here. So I know what story mode is, I know what training mode is. What would a uh, mission mode be, or, or if you can share? So mission mode has different various tactics. So story mode is specifically just 
uh, kind of like a traditional arcade mode where you have the story and you have the cutscenes and then mm -hmm. you have an arcade mode. And then mission mode specific things. Like if you remember games like Tekken where you had to kill 100 enemies or, okay. or do specific tasks. Street Fighter 3 had a training mode where you had to do specific combos and certain things. So that's what the team's doing there. Whereas the training mode here is more like a, a free play mode in that you'll have a, a dummy or an AI that either does whatever you want it to do or nothing. And then you can just kind of beat on them and, ah, and do it. combos. This is oh, probably so what, many options. Yeah, yeah it's... it's uh, Fantastic. For people who like fighting games, they really, they really need certain things to kind of take it to well, a competitive level. Yeah, you need to level. practice room. Yeah. You need to just execute those combos over and over. Yeah. Um, you talked about like wanting to avoid some of the the problematic depth elements of some of the the heavier fighting games, but you did want to keep this really technical and competitive. So where did you sort of draw the line there? I mean, you use Smash as a reference, but like, what is what do you see as the upper limit of this game? I it. It, similar to, I would say, Smash in, in terms of concept and what they were aiming for in terms of like uh, playability and ease for doing the inputs. And as far as the game, they're, they're fans of, of old SNK fighting games, Street Fighter, the Street Fighter series goes without saying, uh, Guilty Gear, Blaze Blue, so, and that's, that's where they try to take the game. And this isn't their first game, it's first fighting game either. They've done another game called Blade Arcus, which is pretty interesting because they worked in collaboration with Sega take characters from the Shining Force universe. Wow. Which is an old, yeah, 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 old yeah, yeah. Genesis I'm, game. Yeah, I know, I'm familiar um, with that. And with their second game, they've they've taken what they learned from Blade Arcus and definitely improved on it. Like right here, you'll see there's there's a lot of technical moves where you have EX style moves, wake up attacks, uh, reversals right here. Yeah, here, here are the counter. circles, counters. So there's- Wave um, dash? Yeah, it's, it's, got, a, it's got a dash. Um, Curly will have a, sort of an aerial dash to coincide with, with Cave Story, but it's very much a ground game, whereas a game like Guilty Gear, which I've mentioned, it has a lot of the speed of Guilty Gear, but it won't have as many of the aerial combos or, and they're working to make sure that there's no infinites because that's, that kind of makes or breaks a game, right? It's like, you have infinite, it's like, okay, great. I'll Thanks wait for the consideration. I'll wait here for 99 cool. seconds. Let me go eat my pizza. <laughs> Oh, there's so much personality from each of these characters. I mean, they're doing really different. I saw what the girl was dropping a fish. Uh, yeah, she'll drop. She'll drop. Yeah. It's a giant blowfish. That's what I thought. Yeah, that's awesome. Delicious. We should have some blowfish in Japan next time we go. Isn't that like the poisonous one? Yeah, if you get it wrong, I, I, I think I ate some of it and it's made my tongue numb. And you're still here. I'm not yeah. scared. Yeah, I would do it. I mean, do you know? You want some blowfish? <laughs> I mean, the fugu. No yeah. thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Is it in your bag? Is it? Oh no no no. You got a big All bag right. over yeah, here. You got a big bag. Maybe that's what you dip your games in. That's that's why it, why it makes my tongue numb when I when I lick your games. Go, yeah, they're yeah. they're waiting for you. Yeah, they are. They're so tiny and cool, man. Yeah, the Nintendo apparently. I guess the 3DS cartridges were the right size not to have them make them taste terrible. <laughs> when you get smaller with the Switch, they figure little kids are gonna put them in their mouth. Right. So they make them taste bad. They make them taste bad. What? This is the, I forget the name, but it is literally the most bitter uh, chemical or element known to man. This is a real thing. It's a real yeah. thing. This is a real thing. It's a real this thing. True. This is amazing. It's a real thing. Okay. So they did it on purpose, presumably so a little kid doesn't swallow it. That makes it, sense. So yeah, it makes sense. Wow. Wow, you are a man of much knowledge, sir. It's, it's the Google. <laughs> it's the Google. <laughs> it's the Google. It's you were licking the game too. I was like, what is going on here? And you can't resist once it's like it's like, oh smell the sock, it smells yeah, terrible. Yeah. You can't resist, it's like, oh, oh yeah, I'm this definitely terrible. Gonna, yeah. I'm definitely gonna try. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> As we sit here looking at one of your like probably like prideful moments making I a love fighting this. game. I dude. love this. It's it's uh it's already really even the first time I played it last summer, it was already really fun to play. And as they keep tuning it, um, in the next few weeks, they're going to be taking it to, to certain test locations in Japan. Um, let's see if we can get Curly in here right now. Maybe this is a good time to see Curly. And Curly's actually not complete, but we'll go ahead and uh, do her anyway so you can, you can see what a Cave Story character looks like right. in a fighting game. So Curly's inspired by Cave Story, but are these other characters inspired or are they just new IPs? So the other characters are from various games, as I mentioned. So a lot of, uh, quite a few of them are from Code of Princess. Um, and then there's other characters from other games. Um, which we'll announce at a later time. Okay, cool. So right here you see Curly and Solange, and this is in Sand Zone, which is a scene, literally a level out of Cave Story. Oh, wow. Do you have a favorite? I like the way that Curly plays already. Um, Solange is pretty fun. Um, she's a character called Helen that has a, ooh, wow, nice reversal. It's a character uh, named Helen that has a, a shield and sword, and she plays like a really fast rushdown character, kind of like a Fei Long, or that kind of character where you kind of want to keep going. And those are the kind of characters I usually like. I'm not a projectile character Ooh. in in fighting games I really like to keep going and I lose really fast. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but yeah, I just course. I just Some like I just yeah. like getting beat down. That's that's the only thing that sucks, man. 
you play against someone like you're talking about playing two months, bro. There's people been playing for two, three, four, five years. Talking well, Street Fighters, yeah, did it in thirty years a series. Yeah, they've, so they've been, been playing they for a while since '91. Yeah, they know every detail, every frame. Yeah, and and it'll get to that level with this game, but you uh, you reduce, as I said, the barrier of entry for how you do input, and all of a sudden it's you can say like, hey. Oh, and they'll say like, oh, I don't want to play fighting games, they're too complicated. It's like, oh, well, here's how you do attacks. It's like Smash. And you'll probably get a lot more people interested in at least giving it a shot and having fun, playing, you know, playing competitively, but also, you know, filthy casuals can have a, a good time, right? Yeah. Have you had any pros come and, and mess around on this yet? Not yet. We're we're finishing up all the characters and we have some time set apart to, to bring in uh, some of both in Japan and then you just bring in some of the, the pros, give it a shot and get some input because it's really important for us to have them play the game. And, and give us a feedback. And also, even without them actually giving us a feedback, more importantly, us watching them and seeing like, what, mm -hmm. are there any abuses? Are there any holes? What do they, you know, are there any attacks that, that are too good that they keep taking advantage of? And, and that's, you know, those are things that we'll want to take care of because when you're playing at home, it's fun. Everybody takes it easy. But when mm -hmm. you go online and if somebody is just picking the best character and is unstoppable, that's no fun for anyone. Right. So we want to make sure that during development, we do our best to, to see what the pros are doing and how they like it and how they're playing to, to adjust the game properly. That's awesome. That's Are you going to awesome. be keeping up with it after release? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so it, we'll, we'll be updating it with patches. We'll be uh, improving it, uh, you know, where possible optimization, including um, probably new characters. Wow, that's that's so, the best news. Yeah. I love that my games are all alive now. Yeah. Like every time I turn them on, there's a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, it's like it's like a gift. Yeah. And unlike Capcom, <laughs> we don't charge for characters. <laughs> Oops. Well, you know. Yeah. So you didn't just bring us this game. I didn't just bring you this game. You didn't just bring us this game. I brought you chocolate. Okay, you brought us chocolate, but you brought us something else. You brought us... No, I brought you chocolate. That's it? This, this is another chocolate? What is this? This is, uh, this is Moldova. chocolate. I gotta chocolate. ask you, this uh, Moldova. Again, there's no shellfish in this, right? There's no shellfish in it, no. I have to ask What's every your time. Yeah. You got your pen? I got my pen oh, in okay, my bag, yeah. yeah. There's no shellfish <laughs> in it, for sure. What else did you bring us? I you brought, brought us something really cool, man. I brought you the Binding of Isaac. You brought us the Binding of Isaac?